I mean? And we're out here and we're going to shout about disability rights until the election, all the way through. We don't care if we win, we don't care if we get anything. That's not what it's about. We just think disabled people are being treated really badly. So the party, we actually formed it a month ago. Three people, myself, three people with disabilities, myself, Eloise O'Hare, where are you Eloise? Yeah. There's Eloise O'Hare, and our candidate Mick Hardy. Hi! Mick. So we're gonna, we're gonna speak a little bit, we're gonna give you a bit of poetry and a few songs, and then obviously if you wanna come and chat to us afterwards, you most certainly can do. We've got a wonderful raffle, you've probably been pestered already, but we've got a great raffle, some great prizes up here, and I'll talk about them a little bit later. But let's get straight on and speak to the candidate. And so when me and Eloise, we, I just said, I don't feel well enough to stand myself. I don't feel fit enough all the time and healthy enough to be an MP. So I rang Eloise and said, I want to do this because I want to shout about stuff. And so she said, I'll ask Mick. And about five minutes later, we were on. We had a party. So please give it up for your dandy party candidate, disabled or not dead yet, Mick Hardy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. And thank you everybody for coming here tonight on a Sunday. I mean, people usually just rest on Sunday, but this is... When I was asked to be a candidate on January the 1st, I thought, oh boy me. Because Vince apparently looked like I'm the most political person he knows. Then I sat down and I thought, hang on, I can get all this stuff out. What we need, nobody's talking about what's happening to the real people in this country, about the disabled people, the poor people. No one's talking about the fact that um, we are now, on, there's two major UN reports going on about what's happening in this country. The first one which I'll brush over, not because that's, you know, not because that's not important, not because that's something I, that, you know, I, I'm not really qualified to speak about, but there's one, you know, there's two reports that are going through the UN at the moment. One of them is reports of the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, about the effect of the so-called austerity message that was happening to kids nowadays. You give people benefit sanctions, the kids go hungry. I mean, that's not rocket science, is it? Well, it is to fucking Dave Snooty, friends, isn't it? But they go. And, and, and also, and, and simultaneously, there, there, there's a major investigation on, under the United Nations Convention on Rights of Persons with Disabilities. Now, the government is, and uh, the, we used to lead the world in, in, in uh, how we looked after disabled people. The UK used to lead the world. But under this coalition that has gone so far downhill now that uh, you know the United Nations are going to start the investigation and to find out what's going on. And I mean, we are a third world country in the eyes. I mean, I've done a workshop. I'm, I'm all fine with them. With Article 28, if you know, if you look at Article 28, the first four paragraphs, especially the first paragraph, which the UK government is a signatory to, the first paragraph says talks about a continuing increase in, you know, improvement in the lives of disabled people. Well, that certainly hasn't happened. Another, another sentence, well, just to put it in perspective, is that an aspiration is for everybody to have clean water. Now think about that for a minute. It's an anti these conventions are aspirations for underdeveloped countries to provide the minimum of what they can for their citizens. And the only thing we can provide at the moment is clean water. And, you know, it's all frack and off, I suppose, but that's another story, isn't it? So, you know, we are a third world country. And now, when the, the, the South American um, spokesman for UN said about the convention, of course, the Daily Mail uh, had a headline as lefty Brazilian nutcase. So, not only is uh, the coalition against European Court of Human Rights, they're now against all the UN conventions. I mean, when has it got to start? And we talk about austerity. It, what austerity? I mean, who do you owe all this money to? Can anybody explain? Because, I, I, I mean, I can't work it out at all. I've studied it, you know, I mean, I'm anti-capitalist, and I, I believe in sort of like, knowing your enemy, but, I mean, I can't work it out. Who does do you owe this money to? I mean, that's not even, I mean, if you get a pound note or five right out of your pocket, it shows us, it shows how old I am, don't it? And if you take a tenner out of your pocket, right, what it says on the bank note, it says, oh, it's a promissory note, isn't it? I promise to buy, pay the bearer on demand for some of whatever signed by the, the, the cashier of the Bank of England. Well, that's supposed to be put up against so you could go out and sort of like swap it for a bit of gold. Anybody tried that? And now, I know a couple of people tried it in the Bank of England and got short shrift, but nowadays, that's not even that. That's money, that's, it's, 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 
um, numbers in cyberspace, and you know, with an economy, what is that? Is it about these supercomputers who make who make thousands of calculations every nanosecond? It's just a deficit. I mean, what 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 sort? Of, it doesn't have any reality. I mean, the year the banks are now suddenly produced. 450 billion euros out to, to put in the eurozone. I mean, if they can magic that out of existence, they can, you know, they can probably make the rest of it disappear, can't they? I mean, at the end of the day, it, 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 it's totally, it's, it's totally um, ideological, it's totally ideological. Look what they've done to disabled people. I mean, there's 70 people a week die after being declared as fit for work by ATOS. Shame. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. There's, there's no, there, there's, People, especially in the rural area, um, um, in large rural area like Norfolk, for instance, where a lot of people are isolated, there's lots of disabled people starving and hungry because they they can't get their they can't get their you know they, they lost their disability living allowance and now they've gone on to um, personal independence payment, which is another kind that take money off disabled people. So people are becoming. We don't have the big institutions anymore. What we're having is we're little institutions. I mean, what I mean by people that is the prisoners in our own homes. And the latest bit of evil, because of what it is, I can't think of another word for it, is the withdrawal of the independent living fund. This except, I mean, this fund is, is for um, 18,000 of the most vulnerable people in our society. That's to, to, to pay for people to go behind, help them to get out of bed, you know, get dressed, use the toilet, the fundamental basic human things which nobody would ever would, you really if you want anybody in that to help you with. The government has scrapped that. The government has, I, I look to, you know, I, I, I'm waiting to hear from uh, Don Smith at the moment, that's how I'm in the right, but I'll probably give the same standard letter as I wrote to um, if Donald Smith about the, the, the firm he's taken over from Atos, which is called Mercurius, which is which is a, an American company, Money National, who's been maximus, maximus, well, yeah, yeah, but, but, but they're mercurial as well, aren't they? You know what I mean? Especially about the um, the multi-million pound fines that they've had in the states for um, fraud and um, mismanagement. So, you know, it's, uh, well, I, I got a letter. From, I, I got signed a letter from Harper. The guy's like been on the radio saying, "What well, stop fat people having benefits? Or if you love a drink, or you don't, you know." So if that could be that easy, how come everybody's not really fit? And so there's all this stuff coming up, it's all this, and nobody is talking about it. Meantime, you've only got to look at everything around here. These are cases, human cases. People are dying. This is ideological. This is a war. This is this is a war against the one percent against the ninety-nine percent, and. Um, I, oh, we set up this party to keep this in the public domain, to keep that in the media. We were already starting to succeed because we had a blind in the interview, some of you might have heard on, on Future Radio last, um, last week, and near the election, Jasmine, whose show I was on, said that, you know, it was such a good interview that she wanted to get to me and Chloe Smith on. I thought, yeah, right, then, come on, come on, babe. You're going to get screwed. No, don't mean it that way, baby, you know what I mean? I, I, it's going to be, you know, I want to see, uh, just to see her, but just defend, try and defend the indefensible. <laughs> right. So we are happy, but we need to get, well, we need to get nominated, probably in for election first. There's some woman from the BBC wanting a word with me as well, so a word is getting out there. I mean, the worst thing that would happen is I could be elected to Parliament because I don't want to. I think the best people to be elected to Parliament are the people who don't have to rock the job. I mean, some, some of these MPs, I'd probably sell the kids in the slavery and move up the grocery pole, you know what I mean? What we meant to start right, you know what I mean? And my daughter, you know what I mean? Whatever. So, if, uh, so if we're asking for your vote, and I'll promise I'll get in their faces time and time and time again, or we'll not be left. And um, we'll keep this in the public domain because at the end of the day, what can't we run a company for people? I understand money, yeah? Okay, I think I've got stuff to say now, but I'll let somebody else have a go. We will not talk. shut up. We will not go away. That's it, we won't. No, no. Why are you taking questions, no. Mick? We'll let you on time. Right here, cheers. Oh, just wait, just stop. You always get one door. Mick Hardy, ladies and gentlemen. Mick Hardy, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, let me. I'm done with it. How's that? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. So, just to uh, recap, we are the Dandy Party disabled yes. and not dead yet. And we are three disabled people, independent disabled people or people with disabilities, and we formed this, and Mick is our candidate. We're a Dandy Party on Facebook. And we've had a little film made by Andrew here, that's on YouTube. 
and I'm gonna just drop some of these down there. Okay, so here's some of our here's some of our blood. This is some of our policies, if you like, in very short sound bites. Sound bites, get us. So we want uh, disabled people need disabled MPs because healthy, wealthy MPs have failed us. Disabled people are nine times worse off than the average person after all the cuts. And severely disabled people are 19 times worse off than average because of the cuts. So we are saying austerity isn't working, it's killing people. The work capability assessments need to be scrapped. We want to see the saviour of the ILF, the Independent Living Fund. Disabled people are due to lose £28 billion in support by 2018 if the cuts continue the way they are. No decision about us without us. I think that's a really fundamental piece of... Yeah, that's where I stand. No decision about us without us. Get dis disabled people to tell you how to make the system run better and we can tell you. It's all there. It's all evidence-based instead of the sham that we've got going on now. Sorry, I'm not sticking to the script. Hang on. <laughs> so no decision about us without us. No bedroom tax. No sanctions. Sanctions are evil. Mixed on them. Well done. No selling on medical records. That's a lot of crap too. 66% of people hit by the bedroom tax are disabled. Simple as that. Deprivatize the NHS. We've tried it. It doesn't work. We don't need profit and health mixed up together. It's not good for us. It's our NHS. It belongs to us. We built it. We brought it into being and they have no right to sell it. Quick, quick, back to the script. Uh, deliberate Benefit delays are killing people. People are dying waiting for the results of assessments. Just waiting and waiting. I think it's deliberate. The DWP itself says that 59% of people are in arrears with their rent since the introduction of the bedroom tax. And Ian Duncan Smith must be taken to court. You have just had your awareness raised. Okay, that's a one. Thank you. So, a lot of that is also written out on a kind of manifesto thing, which is on this, copies on this table, maybe that table, so you can help yourself to that. Tomorrow, Monday, let me just tell you about something else that's on. There's a protest tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, if you can make it, outside County Hall. It's Equal Lives protest against Norfolk County Council, the latest cuts proposal affecting disabled people and carers. Enough is enough, no more cuts. 9 a.m. Monday the 16th, that's tomorrow morning, outside County Hall. If you want more information, there's a piece of paper there about that. And now, I'm going to do some poetry. So, there's a very good, there's a very good uh, booklet out, this one here, it's called From Cuts to Resistance. And I was asked as an artist if I would submit some work. So the uh, bowls that you're getting your raffle tickets in and putting your money in, they are actually big society begging bowls. There's a picture, there's an advert for those in here, you can buy those. Uh, and there's some Atos, anti-Atos stuff in here. Atos is the other people who do the work capability assessment stuff and are basically harassing people and cutting benefits. And the next people to come along are Maximus. And they're coming, and when there's a protest on the 2nd of March, so if you want to know about that, uh, ask us and we'll talk about that. But uh, I actually, I sent them a poem in, and I didn't know, but they printed it, so here it is. Strip. Give me an S. S. S is your spare bedroom tax. 10 million disabled people in the UK under attack. S is the shirt that they stole off my back. Give me a T. T. T is your torture, your tick box test. 70 fit for work people die each week because your work capability assessment's up Cull Creek. Stop putting humans through an inhumane test. The disabled only protest when they've nothing left to lose. Ian Duncan Smith is the shit on my shoes. Give me an R. R. R is for Remploy, redundancies, recession. I paid into your system, but you missold me oppression. You wish more employers would take us on. So take the lead, Dave, and show what can be done. Better still, government, give the lead to us. If disabled have to be on board, we'll drive the fracking bus. I need another moat and a house for my ducks. Mixed metaphor and the system sucks. Give me an 
Aye! Aye! Aye is the Independent Living Fund. It lets people live the lives that they own. New claims were stopped in 2010 and it's death by coalition in 2015. Not yet disabled millionaires are stocking up on shares while stripping us of benefits. First they take the services that allow us independence, then they'll stick us all in care homes and trouser all the profits. Give me a P! P! P, P is for PIP, a personal independence plan. It replaces disability living allowance, but it's a scam. 500,000 people tricked out of the help they currently get. This coalition are the goalpost goal shifters. They've changed the definition of disability and that's a job for doctors, not politicians. Disabled people have had enough when the only option is destitution. The gloves are firmly off. Thank you. Yay!